Hey YouTube, this is Megan's Apathetic Car Reviews, or as I like to call it, Parts and Emotional Labor. So are you recording all of the nefarious activities? Another one of Dan's friends, unbelievably, decided that uh, they were uh, cool with me providing my totally unresearched and uh, thoughtless review of his car. I think that guy's name is Ed. Correct. Thank you very much, Ed, for indulging this exercise. Initial impressions, Ferrari California 30. And this is a newer car. This is... 2013. 2013. So this is a newish car. This is not a vintage one. Are they still making it? No. No. Okay, so they're done with the run of this car. Yes, they now have the Portofino, okay. which is the successor. Oh, the Portofino is the successor to this car. Yes. Okay. All the Ferraris are pretty cars. And of course, before owners bring the cars over, I think they probably, before Dan reviews, and they're like, oh, it's going to be on the camera. It's going to be on the camera. I want my car to look its best. I want the best showing. I don't mind that this is not the Rosa Corsa. This yeah. darker red looks really, really pretty on this car. It's called Rosso Marinello. Rosso Marinello, like the town where yes. Ferrari is based. Yes. Okay, so Marinello is like the Detroit of Italy. Uh-huh. Knowing nothing about this car, because that's the whole point of the videos, is for me to remain totally, uh, objectively ignorant about the car. The only thing I've heard in background, the only thing anybody is, is kind of said that I remember is that this is supposed to be the girl Ferrari? The chatter around this car is that, that this is the woman's Ferrari. Yeah, people say it's not a real Ferrari. <sighs> well, okay. My initial thoughts about that, I 100% do not think that a bunch of Ferrari executives in Marinella are sitting in the boardroom wringing their hands about how can we break into the female market? <laughs> How did things ever get so far? I don't know. I don't think they designed these cars for women. Half the times I don't think they even care about the male perspective. They're just trying to be cool. Because a lot of these things are impractical. I don't think, based on... Oh, Jeff's here. Oh, oh! Oh, close enough. Oh, close enough. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I don't think Ferrari at all bothers itself thinking about what would a woman want in in a Ferrari? I, 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 I'm totally, I totally, totally, totally don't buy that at all. That's like the people in the Tampax boardroom going, how can we capture the male market? And I'm not, I don't, I mean, I don't want to be unkind in that it's, it's sexist to say this is a male interest. It's a, it's a historically male interest, the Ferraris. But, you know, unfortunately, statistically, there's all this evidence base that it's a, it's a historically male interest. Hi, Jeff. Hi. Hi. We have Jeff. I have an audience. Yes, now you have to perform. Yeah, and now I have to perform. Do your little song dance. Quiet, no, oh, you're okay, dude. Shot. No, yeah. no. No, that's the realness of it. What, 98% of Dan's subscribers are reportedly male. Mm -hmm. Because YouTube gives you that info. And so, I don't know where these silent market of female f Ferrari patrons are, um, because they're not watching the videos, and from everything I've observed in real life, they're not buying the cars. Again, not, I don't want to be sexist. It's not that women can't have a sincere, genuine interest in these automobiles. It's just I, I have yet to see that community. The styling cues, I don't know that they look like more feminine to me that doesn't translate for me i don't think the styling cues are more feminine um i think because obviously we're looking at like this one has four are those qualifying as seats i mean they like, kind technically of two plus two two plus, yeah. two. <laughs> two, plus two two plus so, one and a half <laughs> yeah they're they're for like people who maybe lost their legs i don't know <laughs> thought i'd try out my sea legs but well, you ain't got no legs lieutenant day Yes, I know that. The fact that it has four seats, maybe that's why people are like, this is not a real Ferrari or this is the girl Ferrari. But 
Like, there are very conventionally masculine cars like the Dodge Demon that has four seats. Yeah. And that thing will absolutely annihilate a lot of Ferraris. Am mm-hmm. I right? Correct. Correct. Whoa! Whoa! Dad! Jesus! <laughs> 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 All the American muscle cars, generally, well, Corvette doesn't, but plenty of cars with four seats that, you know, outperform many, many Ferraris. Yeah. Mustang, Camaro, Dodge Two Challenger, seats. all yeah. have four seats. So, like, it can't be that. I understand that anytime you put more seats in one of these cars, very rudimentary thing I've learned is that that's more weight, which means it has to go, it's gonna go slower than a car with two seats so that much is obvious it looks this car looks heavier it is this car looks heavier than dan's and some it's other about Ferraris. A, it's about a thousand pounds heavier yeah and a lot of that's coming from this yes. mechanism for the top oh yeah that might be another reason that i guess people associate this car with with women for some reason is uh the convertible top but again that doesn't follow for me i d- i really dislike convertibles i and i think a lot of women do because when you're riding in a convertible, your hair, like, and again, I don't fuss with my hair. I get about two haircuts a year, about two. Even if I put my hair in a ponytail and I ride in dance car with just the window open, you get so many flyaways in your face and it just looks unkempt. And if you're going to have longer hair, having a huge amount of like fast air moving past your head makes it unpresentable by the time you arrive at your destination. Uh, there's probably stats out there, we can probably look them up later, but I would say that a lot of women probably feel the same way, if I'm at all representative of my gender, which may not be true either. It's enjoyable for a dude with short hair, and he doesn't mind, it doesn't matter what his hair looks like, especially if he's wearing a hat. I'm never gonna be one of those girls whose hair <laughs> flows perfectly in, in a convertible. Perhaps maybe it's less aggressive looking than the 458. It's not like as dramatic the curves. Certainly there are cars I think of when I think of the styling cues that like look really, like the Vipers look really masculine. Some of them, especially the higher end Vipers, it just looks hostile and aggressive. Mercy! However, this car would probably outperform a bunch of Vipers. Oh uh, yeah, it would. Yes, this does not look more feminine to me. It just, it looks heavier. Yes. And it looks more practical because it has four seats. What would be an analog to this car in the other supercar brands? Is that a thing? Aston Martin. Yeah, no, I was just trying to get like yeah. Aston Maybe Martin's the, yeah. Maseratis. But yeah, 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 Aston yeah. Martin's Maseratis. Because it's, oh, it's a grand, it's a grand, Stanley, yeah, it's a grand tour. You know, it's yeah. not. So like the Jags. And yeah, the Jag, yes, yep. yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, no, it does kind of actually have, of the Ferraris I've seen, a Jag vibe. Yeah. It's still a Ferrari. It's but like, you know, somewhere, someone, his grandparent was a Jaguar. You know, it was like one quarter Jaguar, if you look at the styling. Yeah, it seems very long up front. Yeah. Well, that's because the engine's up front. Oh, okay, there we go. Yes. Um, it's not a mid-engine. Well, so, technically, it's a front mid-engine. Whatever. If you look at people like Dan and Richard, and then they're a garage, and they have food scales, and they're weighing the weight differential on their canards in carbon fiber versus whatever the else the originals were made of. So one pound, six, six ounces. ounces even. Watch, this will be heavier. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wow. 12, only 12 ounces. I suppose, yeah, a thousand pounds is hard to get over. If, if we're weighing the little, yeah. little like parts in the front of the grill. The rims look nice. Has this one been lowered? Nope. Okay, do these, these don't often get lowered, do you think? I'm gonna guess not as often. Cause they're more practical. I like the little contrast, like chrome colored scoopy things. That is specific to the Ferrari California 30. Oh, okay, it's pretty. I like that detail on this one. This is a very good choice, I think. Of... And those aren't scoopy things. Well. It's a venti thing. It's a venti thing? <laughs> yeah. Venti is like a word for a coffee, doesn't True. it mean like long? Uh, I just call it a vent. It's a venti. Well, now it has to be a venti thing. Okay, it? those are venti things. This is a very classic combination with the interior. I love the camel colored leather. I think a lot of dudes don't. It's not as masculine as black. As black? Black. One gets dirty is my problem. Oh, yeah, and it gets dirty. Oh, it probably does get it does. way yeah. easier. It gets dirty. Yes. Yeah. 
The exhaust? It looks less pronounced than some of the other Ferraris. Yeah. Um, do they mod the exhaust on these? Not as often. Dudes who get Ferraris learn to sound a certain way. Noise quality is important. We have Jeff here, who's the, the 355 representative, which I, which purportedly is the best noise quality of Ferraris that are going. How does this one rate, in your opinion, in terms of noise quality? Actually, it's very good. It's very good. Yes. It's when the when the valves are open. When the valves are open. Oh, this one has like the 430 and the 458. Where... Yeah, it's got the exhaust valves. Okay. Okay. It loses something, I guess, in terms of it's like, this is awesome appeal when you can't see the motor through yeah. the glass, which is very much like, you know, as we talked about, that, give, <laughs> that gives you a certain feeling. Well, American. they named this car after an American state, so, um, which is unusual. I don't think there's another Ferrari. There is. What? The 250 California. What a gorgeous car. This is almost better than having a real 250 because you can drive this. That's the Ferris Bueller car. Oh, okay. So, so this is, is this like a successor? Well, the name is. Yeah, but it's not the same vibe I'm taking it. No. It's not romanticized like that car. No. Okay. Even I can recognize the the Ferraris from the, like, in the era of that original California are particularly beautiful. Yes. Um, even though this car would far outperform it. Here, you want to do the trunk? <laughs> It lifts. It's just heavy as. Okay. Oh, that is heavy. <laughs> that is heavy. That's a thing to do. Whoa. Okay, so this is a very big piece, and I was expecting like more room, but yet it's not. There's <laughs> there's not a lot of space in this. No. Nope. Um, and I guess that's because of the uh, top. Yeah. That, and and that's. Again, that top probably adds a bunch of weight. Oh, and look, the, the owner has all the little, like, naturally the Ferrari guys have the, yeah. all the original little tools nestled in there. Yep. Oh, okay, there's that Ferrari engine um, that is usually in the back. Yep. Yeah, I don't know why Dan's showing me the engine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything to impart about that. It's there's, there. It's there, and there's a lot going on there, but it's apparently the same block. Yes. This is the same engine block it's as the, the F-136. F-130, whatever. It's probably a hassle to get in there and work on this. Yeah, probably. Does this look harder to work on than your 430 or easier? Oh, way harder. Way harder because of... Yeah. It's encased in stuff. Yeah, you got a lot more stuff going on. So you'd be, as a normal guy, you'd be more nervous about ripping this one apart. Uh, no. No? I mean, it would just be more effort. Okay, because of unscrewing stuff more yeah it'd just be harder to get in there but it's not i mean this is still a pretty simple car yes dude that's oh a... yeah what, what was that <laughs> I just, uh, just if you go back far enough though interestingly some people consider the front engines to be true ferraris right because of the early v12 front engines right i think Enzo maybe even said something at one point about how that's the true spirit of the car well the v12 specifically yeah they specifically talk about the v12 okay so all this uh all this men working themselves up over the mid-engine and the father of the Ferrari brand really believed in a front-engine car. But he wanted the V12s and this is only a V8. Okay, um, so when was the first mid-engine Ferrari? Uh, the 30... No, the, the Dino 246 yeah, technically. Dino, yeah. And what's the advantage of going to less cylinders? Are we gonna do the piston dance? Sure. What's the advantage of going to less cylinders? Lighter engine. Lighter engine mm -hmm. and four less cylinders that can break. So what would be the benefit of having 12? I mean, arguably there's not that much benefit over a V8 because they both can be very powerful engines. So why would you ever I mean, some of it, Some of it's honestly the sound of a V12 is very distinct. Is that the twelves? Do they scream or yes. the screamers? Okay, so the more they can cylinders and valves. Wait, mm. I don't know what valves are, but I know there's cylinders, which it's a big hole, and then the piston, right? Yes. I guess that's the only discernible advantage from your point of view in performance is the sound quality that the four more cylinders create. I mean, 
I think they have more torque, if I remember correctly, but not always. And why is torque good? Torque helps you get going faster. Okay. It makes you accelerate more. Torque is acceleration, horsepower is top end. Yeah. Generally. Jeff said stuff. <laughs> Jeff said words. Uh, <laughs> Jeff, what was that? Torque is acceleration and horsepower is top end, generally speaking. That. <laughs> um, I don't know what that means. It's going down, but how do I... Oh! Oh! See, this is much more like, yes, once I put this down, I can see fairly well. I wish it went, the seat went up just the littlest bit more. Um, I still feel really low in this car for whatever reason, but it's higher than the Ferrari. I'm I think not... the doors are taller. Oh, the doors are taller, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. So it's got the backup camera and all that. Nope. No. No. Oh. Okay. To me, that's an important function in these cars, because you're not seeing out the back of that. No. It's at pretty, all. It's pretty difficult. Yeah, so like every Ferrari, reversing it will be a pain in the D. This looks fairly straightforward. Actually, this Speedo <laughs> reminds me of my Mini a little bit. The big tech? Yeah. Yeah, this all just looks much more straightforward to me. It, it's not nearly as fussy and complicated as the 458 and the 430. Steering wheel is simple. The steering wheel does feel simpler. But it's beautiful. The interior is beautiful. It's a very classic combination. Well, should we drive it? Yeah, we sh should drive it. I mean, here's my. I know your viewers, like some of them when I did the Lamborghini, were like, you should drive it. And I don't know that that adds any value for you guys because A, I'm very, very tentative driving a car that is not owned by us. And so I'm not going to really make it perform the way that you guys want to see it perform. Um, and B, like even if I were tr to uh, try and make it perform the way you guys want to see it perform, Dan is probably going to do that better. So I don't know, like, is my perspective on just driving it, like, valuable in and of its own, even though I'm not going to be able to demonstrate yeah. its full potential? Sure. I think you just take it from more of the perspective of what it's like to drive, not necessarily what it's like to drive fast or near the limits. Yeah. Okay. And now for something completely different. You know, yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we're talking yeah. about the... T okay, so obviously Jeff's 355 is uh, convertible. What's um, Targa? Tar uh, Targa. Targa. Targa, what's how Targa? What because they actually made one that was like this with a... Well, not that's a hard top, but with a soft top, complete convertible. Oh. That one just has the centerpiece that comes out. Oh, okay, okay. So now we know that. Um, we were talking about, like, he's listening to me do my, my uh, ignorant review of the California, and he's like, she's going to say it's because of her hair. And he was right. And, yeah, that's... Wait, 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 wait. wait. I, no, no, I, I, I want to defend myself. I thought that and thought, no, Jeff, don't make that misogynist joke. I he, was, <laughs> he restrained himself, and then when I said it, he was I could see him behind the camera. Like, <laughs> um, but, no, okay, so... Our cultures, gender, beauty expectations being what they are, and I'm somewhat adopting the one of long hair, I'm sorry, it's not practical. When you put wind through a foot or more of hair, it goes everywhere. Yeah. Like I said, even if I'm a ponytail, like the short ones will go mm -hmm. So like by the time you get to your destination, even though you still got a ponytail, you're like a little, you look like a little baby bird with like fluffy <laughs> parts coming out. Because not all your hair is the same length. Um, and it's just it's obnoxious. And even though I'm not an overly fussy, I think, person as far as grooming, it's like, oh, I hate it. And so even when Dan has his window cracked and mm -hmm. we're going fast in the Ferrari, I tell him to put it up. Yep. Again, I have a low threshold of grooming personally. Women who spend any time, especially women who spend a lot of time uh, on that, aren't going to find that desirable. They have spent money, effort, time keeping their edges laid. So, uh, e even though I'm single, I do have hair ties in my car. <laughs> oh, that's the, brilliant. For the times where there are- That's a really <laughs> smart move, actually. Move your seat forward. <sighs> uh, you must be trouble. So when you pick up a date, you're like, oh, here you go. Uh, Jeff's a smoothie. <laughs> You get into Jeff's Target Top 355 and he's like, here you go. <laughs> no, because then it's usually, it's usually, the response is usually, 
Whose are these? <laughs> Gross. Ew. Jeff like gives her an old scrunchie. And, Welcome yeah. to 1987. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, like, no, like, oh, the knees start knocking. He just handed me hair ties. Um, but, um, but, but yeah, no, the, that would, that would make your eyebrow go up. Be like, this guy is taking a lot of girls for rides in his Ferrari. Um, that he's handing me hair ties. However, it is a good idea. So I will accept his hair tie. They yeah. always Still do. don't want to look like a clown. They yeah. always yeah. do. They always do. Okay, so. Same as my old 430. Oh, so. It's forward. So it's start. So oh, it's. Turn it forward. Oh. And then well, push. Yeah. Your other forward. It's a slightly, slightly less violent roar when it starts up. And you yeah. can hear Jeff's car in the background. <laughs> it feels fairly similar to the 430. Whoa, ah. That spends more time on his hair than I do. It's because he's got hair. Well, he has nice hair. Yeah, he has I very know. pretty hair. We actually use the same shampoo and conditioner. Do you really? Yes. That's funny. It is funny. You can't see anything out of the back. I mean, you can because there's a convertible, but like... Yeah, it's pretty terrible. I wonder if it's even worse than the 430 and 458 in that respect. It's a large rear. It is. And it goes up high. Yeah. Because of that convertible. So I'm just being very tentative. So now we do... One panel. Just the one. Yep. And it's in one auto. Yep. There yes. you go. Okay, so... How many horsepower does this have? 453, I think. Okay, and how no. much does the 458 have? No, it's 480. Uh, mine is 560. 560, this is 480. Yeah. And it's a thousand pounds heavier. Yeah. Okay. The sound doesn't reverberate and like have that like quality where it wakes up your neighbor's sleeping children. It is, it's more of a polite Ferrari sound. What's that? His oh, car. Oh, that's his car sounds great. Uh huh. I guess. See what I'm saying? It sounds like it's spooling up like a jet. Yeah. Okay, is this engine warm? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go a little bit though. <laughs> yeah, no, Jeff's car sounds like an F1 car. Ability there <laughs> that that got to top speed of 55 very quickly yeah I looked down and I was like oh really am I doing that <laughs> okay yeah oh 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 Oops. oh oh <laughs> I'm saying the convertible is everyone can see everything about you and hear you yeah no that's weird I, I'm sure you could see it in the shots when I'm going faster it's like yeah. even though I have a ponytail all the all the shorter pieces and flyaways are like this is the convertible that was in, that was in the, you know, the famous uh, Fast and the Furious, like more than you can afford, pal, Ferrari. What's the retail on one of those? More than you can afford, pal, Ferrari. <laughs> no, that was a 355. Oh, it was? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was Jeff's car. Oh, okay. More than you can afford, pal, 355. Yeah. More than you can afford, pal, 355. Here's a scrunchie. <laughs> the driving quality, again, totally uninformed, but just uh, my subjective experience of driving the car, it's smoother driving. I feel less of the road in this one. Yeah. For sure, which I guess is why they call it a touring car, is because you want you, you want it to be a comfortable journey. Yes. And in the 458 and 430, it's you like feel like you're you've got that definite feeling of the road more. Yeah. For this review, yeah, I know. In a in a convertible, that's perfect. 
By the way, when did you start saying give it the beans? I, don't know. I swear to God, I've never heard that until recently. Uh, a couple videos ago. Okay. Well, so you just decided to start saying that? It's an odd thing. I mean, I've, I've said it before. Where does it come from? I don't know. But I mean, so shall beans. we shall we uh, give it the beans? Yes. Off of this uh, light. Sure. Okay. Yes. We'll do sure. that. Oh, Jeff's directly behind me. Yeah. He looks so serious. So serious in my rear view. And see, he's got a hat on. He knows. Uh -huh. It screws with your hair. That is not like a female, like, ooh, it's a convertible. Yeah. That is not a selling point for women, I feel. Okay. I'm gonna give the other. Optimal like car cruising weather. Oh, it's perfect. And though. the sun, it looks everything looks good. Again, hair. Like uh, the overall driving quality is just gonna be more relaxed. You're not gonna get so much feedback from the road. It doesn't make you feel on edge in the same way as the 430, 458. But then again, a lot of people buying these car cars want that they were like oh a lot of feedback yeah it feels dangerous it feels dangerous yeah they like the the violence of the of the launch and the feeling every bit in the road definitely muted in this car i'm not scared of these cars i just don't get the same uh level of excitement as you guys so in summation ferrari california not a girl ferrari it's just a somewhat more practical Ferrari. I feel it's still, it's still very much Ferrari. It's three quarters Ferrari, one quarter Jaguar. Like I said, I think one of its grandparents was a Jaguar in terms of styling cues. If I had my choice, and again, Megan's value system doesn't include these purchases, but if I had to purchase one of the Ferraris I've driven, I would probably purchase a two-seater. I think they, they, they just look more, more sculptural, more beautiful, the styling cues. All of them to pick from this wouldn't be the first one i would pick but i understand why people would like this car because it still performs like a ferrari it it got going pretty pretty fast pretty quick would it help uh, to know that this is well under a hundred thousand dollars now oh really well that does make a big difference uh-huh you can um, even i've even seen them as cheap as 70. 70. yeah really for that okay well, whatever. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that does help considering your car uh, used is more than double that. Yes. Um, that is great. If you've been like, oh, Megan, I'm buying the $70,000 Ferrari. If you're like, yes, <laughs> thank God. This is a really lovely car. It's obviously still a Ferrari. Its performance was very impressive. You just feel the road a little less. Uh, you don't get as much feedback, but it's meant to feel like that because it wants to be comfortable because you're supposed to be driving further in it. Lovely car. Thank you, Ed. This is a fantastic, fantastic automobile for what that's worth coming from me. And thank you to Jeff for uh, the pro tips. <laughs> thank you to Jeff for dating pro tips when you own a convertible Ferrari. <laughs> always have, always have hair ties in your, your, uh, yeah, your glove Make sure box. Make in a new bag. And in, in a new bag. So it doesn't look, <laughs> so it, and like, don't, don't have like torn off pieces of some other girl's hair on it. Um, new ones, new ones. Well, thank you guys. Thank you for watching. I can't, each time I do these, I can't believe that you guys enjoy them, but I know you do. Stay tuned for more cars. Oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait. Watch that video. Please click subscribe. Oh, yeah, Dan has that thing going with the clock. Uh -huh. As soon as he hits 50,000 subscribers, he's going to give that away. And I think he's giving it away to a list of potential people who have bought merch or email list, signed up for the uh -huh. email list. Members. Oh, members. Yep. Members is a new thing. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi. Stay tuned for more car stuff. It's, it's going to be sweet. <laughs>